How's it going guys? Motor City Miner here coming at you from the home basement mini miner farm because yes, I got six more. This time, they're RX Zeros. You're like, oh my gosh, you bought six? Yes, I bought six. They were only $400. So I mean, they're pretty much the cheapest any of these miners have started off at price wise. It's cheaper than the AL Zeros, which start at 800. You know, 400 just really low risk. Now you're probably like, but didn't I just see on everyone else's YouTube that these only make a dollar a day? Yes, Radiant has crashed hard. Okay, there was a nice pump when the A6 got announced and it has crashed super hard, pretty much at like 12 month lows at the moment or right around there, you know, barely above 0.001. So, uh, and yield is down too, because obviously the network hash rate has gone up, but a network hash rate's only up about, I want to say, last I looked, like 5, five X from when these were ordered, which is about where I thought it would be, to be honest. Uh, I figured it'd be somewhere between 1 and 2 petahash, and that's about where it's at. Um, so obviously that affects yield as well, but yield is still pretty good on one of these units. Um, like... I think the last I put in a yield on any individual units, like, I think it was like 1,500, maybe 1,300, which is why, you know, it's very different than the AL0. Kind of regretting my AL0 purchase because yield is like one alpha day. But, um, yeah, right now, really, the numbers look really bad on these because of how much the, the price has crashed. Essentially, it's, you know, in half of what it was when these were ordered. Um, Plus, the network going up. But again, yield is probably the most important thing when it comes to uh, smaller market cap coins. And right now, these are still yielding well over a 1,000 a day. Yes, that will keep dropping. But if you put it in the perspective of when the KS0 came out, it's pretty good. I mean, the KS0s, I was in the first batch. I was getting like 1,500 a day. These are right around there. Um, but you have to remember, Radiant actually has, and none of this is financial advice, Again, this is just my thinking. Radiant actually has a smaller total, ca um, like, total supply than Caspa. Caspa is like twenty-eight point seven billion or somewhere around there, and um, Radiant's actually twenty-one billion. So it's actually smaller. So this will be yielding essentially the equivalent amount of coins as a KS zero did when they first came out um, on a coin that has about. Uh, 75% the total supply. So there is a lot of upside for the yield, which is why this is not really that crazy of a risk in my mind. Um, again, do I think our Radiant will, you know, compete with Caspa? No. Caspa is game-changing technology, blocked egg, whatever, you know, like it has way more upside potential. But Radiant, I still think is pretty undervalued. Um, you know, with a supply smaller than cast, but and still being a well-developed chain, has lots of token projects, you can actually make other mineable projects on it, which is becoming more common, like the Ton Network does that, but Radiant can do that. Um, so ha I think Radiant has a bright future. It's not ever going to probably pass CASPA for market sh uh, cap or anything like that, but having a slightly smaller supply than CASPA, I do think there's a lot of potential, and this is undervalued at 0.001. Where do I think it'll be? I would say probably around 10 cents at the peak. But again, that means each of these is making about $100 a day retroactively. So um, that's kind of my thinking and why I went on them. Plus, I, as I mentioned in a prior video, I have been mining Radiant since pretty much day one. I have a very large bag from GPU mining. Um, very large bag from FPGA mining. And I didn't want to stop mining Radiant. So this was a cheap way to get in. And again... At least in my perspective, kind of minimal risk because they're only $400. Um, they're not like two grand or something. And they're yielding still pretty well. Co again, comparable to the KS0 yield. And that's with, you know, Caspa having a higher supply. So I think there's some upside here. So that's why I went through with it. But again, do your own research, not financial advice. But I, yes, I got six of these. So um, I got it reorganized yet again. Uh, so these are still KS zeros. They are not mining Caspa. I do not mine Caspa with KS zeros. Completely pointless. These are mining, you know, Cedra, Bugna, all the other K heavy hash crap, uh, crap coins. Um, but since that's not really that important, at least for now, because I want to get these up and going and get me yield as soon as possible before the network hash rate keeps climbing. 
I'm just gonna literally swap them in place with these. Um, but I do, again, these are kind of spec mining at this point, and some have done really well. Bugna's really gone up in cost. Uh, I mean, my Bugna bag is worth a couple thousand dollars at this point. And so that, you know, at the time I was mining, it looked like I was mining like zero cents a day, but you know, it worked out pretty well for me. Um, again, not financial advice, but um, I do want to keep these mining, but for today at least, I will take them offline to prioritize the RX zeros. So let's unbox these guys, get them up there. We'll unbox one just to do like, you know, a true unboxing and see what it looks like. Obviously it's, it's gonna look the exact same, let's be serious. Um, but yeah, we'll at least unbox one up close and then we'll get all six running. Go on the computer, show you guys how to set that up. I'm gonna try it on Viper Pool because I really like Viper and well, they have an RXD pool that I have used pretty much for all my GPU and FPGA mining. So hopefully it works with ASICs too, but we will find out. I know it works with the Dragon Ball ASICs because the entity was mining on Viper. Uh, not sure about Ice River, so we'll we'll find out. Uh, Ice River had these on Humpool, and you can see when they shipped these out last week because there was a giant drop in hash rate on Humpool. About 200 tera hash worth of Ice River kit. RX zeros shipped out over the weekend. So let's get to it. Let's open this up and get mining some Radiant. There she is, there's the label RX0 and the pink foam we all know and love. And yes, it, it looks the exact same as all of them. Uh, again, the only difference I've ever seen on these KS0s, minus the very first batch of, oh, this is RX0, but the, this form factor from Ice River is how many of these uh, angled fins there are. This has four angled fins, or well, I guess six, there's the two tiny ones. Uh, some have had more, some have had less. I, that seems to be the only thing they ever change. Um, the first batch, you know, had some unique quirks, like it had Noctua fans, which were cool, and some other things. But other than that, they've all pretty much been the same. I guess there was a limited edition green one for Casper for a while. Um, but yeah, just plain old RX-0 there. So I'm gonna put a fan on here, USB fan. Again, we, no overclocks available yet, so just standard USB fan should be plenty. Um, and get this guy up and running as well as the other five. So, we'll be back. We are in the computer now, as you can see. I have found my local IP. Actually, for all six of my units, they are all plugged in. Um, but yeah, this is for the last one. Figured I'd set up the rest so I can at least get mining, get some information on the pool, and then go through this process for you guys on how to set this up. So, just like all ice rivers, once you find the IP, which, again, there's many ways to do that, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, you're going to type in admin. So you type in the password. Password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't put a nine or zero, it won't work. And you'll log in and be greeted by the typical, um, you know, Ice River interface. This is everything here. This is their address. Just for fun, I think we should put it in our um, Explorer. All right, got the Explo Radiant Explorer up here. We're going to put in Ice River's address, see how much they've mined. Is it a ton? It's not a lot. 12,000, okay. So they, they haven't been mining too much, uh, Last at least for on this address. Again, they probably have multiple addresses. But yeah, it looks like they unplugged everything on the 30th and haven't been mining since. Anyway, um, so we're going to put in my information. So I'm using Viper again. Um, this firmware has the same issue as the latest KS zeros. You actually do have to put in all three pools or it will error out. So I will show you that error here in a moment. I'm going to delete all this though first. So we're going to delete all the default info, which is theirs. You know, you can put whatever you want for a password. Uh, some pools require information here. Viper does not. So I'm just putting X. Um, this is the Viper Stratum info for where I live. Again, you'll want to put whatever's closest. Um, and then I'll put my wallet worker. We'll copy this from my other unit except change it up and say six. 
this is my sixth one. So we'll press save and it'll see that there's an error that pops up um, saying that you don't have, you know, pool two. And then if you do fill out pool two and not pool three, then I'll say both pool three error. So you do have to do them all. Kind of annoying. Um, you can do true backups if you want. I don't like doing backup pools on A6 because literally like one millisecond of disconnect and it'll switch to your failover pools. And, you know, then you're stuck with pending payouts on a bunch of different pools and everything. So I, I tend to adjust manually if needed, if a pool ever does go down. Um, so I've got that set up. You don't have to restart the unit for those to take effect, like the very first K as zeros, but um, I always do a restart anyway, just so I get a fresh sheet of data on the home page. Um, and, you know, if there's any weird issues or anything, it tends to resolve that. But again, not necessary. Um, so that should restart here in a couple moments. Uh, we can check out how our other units are doing. So let me refresh these pages for you. So you can see, you know, this one's chugging along right above its 260 mark like it should. Um, same with my other units, you know, 266, 283, 276. This one's a little low, but it should be coming up. There we go. It's now been over a half hour, so it's 30 minutes. It's at 266. It's looking great. This one will take a few moments to restart and then on the pool side you can see that we are mining away and earning some rxd radiant um so that's that's kind of what's going on we'll wait for rx 0-6 to show up here um and then we'll kind of go into my spreadsheet for roi calcs and kind of see where things stand on that front again right now rxd is kind of at a you know, essentially a six month low. Uh, so it's not looking good on that front, but again, our yield is still pretty high. So we're at five, you know, 5,882, and that's before even hitting full hash rate across these six units. So uh, we should, you know, after 24 hours, come back, see what we're earning. And then that will, you should be able to input that information into our ROI calcs and see where things are standing. Hopefully this is restarting now. There we go. It has restarted. Awesome. You can see that it has connected to the pool. It has accepted shares. Uh, so far, the fans have been largely off. I do have a single fan on top of these units, um, just that USB fan. But so far, it pretty much doesn't need them. Um, these units like to run hot. If you put the fan on too high, they do slow down their hash rate. So um, again, the internal fans, I am leaving them to auto for now. If we ever get them to overclocking on these, you know, that might change. But for now, auto it is. So that's all I got until we're back in 24 hours to do our ROI calcs. We are in the computer now, and I made a new uh, sheet in my ROI calculator sheet. Uh, this time for RxD. I should do an update on these other two. Cass is going all right. Elf, we're not going to talk about my AL0 purchase. Um, I'll probably still work out all right. It's weird. And you'll kind of see that with this one too, when we start getting into the numbers here. Um, like, depending on when you get the ASIC, like, I would say in a, probably the majority of cases, you're probably better off buying the coin. But that doesn't mean you can't make money mining. So again, and I think those are two very different things. And I kind of got an argument with someone about this in a Discord. Like, mining versus buying is is not necessarily a question of what one's the most profitable. As long as you can be profitable mining and you enjoy mining, and like th that's the part of crypto that you believe in. And what I mean by that is, you know, all the ethos of proof of work and all that other stuff. Like there's they're apples and oranges to me uh maybe not to everyone but i think for most people that are miners that enjoy mining and like to mine uh mining and buying are just apples and oranges they aren't the same thing so but yes i will say and you will probably see this here that in most cases at least recently anyway it probably is better to buy the coin 
then mine the coin for overall profits, but that doesn't mean you can't make a profit and still be ahead mining. Again, it's just the magnitude of where you could have been changes. Um, but as long as you're still mining at a profit, I mean, technically, as long as you get past your initial investment, so in this case, the RX0 of 3.99, you know, um, you're doing all right. Um, now, uh, obviously, that tends to rely on the HODL method, so we'll kind of get into all that. But here's my nice new spreadsheet. Again, for my RX zeros, again, ELF, we're just not going to talk about. To be honest, if ELF, you know, has a nice run up, though, I'll still break even on my AL zeros. Um, anyway, so I got six RX zeros, as you saw earlier in this vid. Um, it has been a few days since they've been running now, so I have some good numbers. Um, Three ninety nine each. Uh, on the day that I bought them, which is the day they sold out on Ice River, which was September 7th, so I'm going to assume that was the day you would have FOMO'd or bought them because you wanted to mine RxD, so whatever your purpose, reason, doesn't really matter. This is the cost of RxD on that day. The average value from coin market cap was 0 0.001628, so less than, uh, or a little more than a tenth of a penny. So in my specific case, my $2,394 investment could have bought me 1.470516 million RXD. That's a nice big bag. Um, so just that's what we're going to be using as my baseline for on the yield front of ROI. Again, that is different than the USD value, which will vary day to day based on the exact value R. RXD on any specific day. So I got to put in my information here. I got all mine on the 2nd of October. So they have been running for almost two weeks now. Um, this is my current yield so far in those 12 days, 65,548. And I have input today's value, which has come down quite considerably since the September 7th. Uh, current value is 0 0.000. So now we're less than a tenth of a cent nine one four six um so at the current value my six units have mined me about sixty dollars worth of rxd in 12 days um so the calculator needs a couple little more information which will be my daily rxds for right now and that'll kind of fill out the rest of this information such as when i should expect to um hit my ROI on a US dollar front. So that is the day that I have mined more RXD than the value I spent in US dollars. So that's 2,394. Again, that can be affected by a run up in the cost of RXD, which is why I also have had added, and you probably remember this from the last video, a section where I also compare to the yield uh, I could have got if I just bought instead of mined. So um, two different values here, um, two different ways you can ROI on a miner. Again, kind of apples and oranges. Being a miner, I just prefer to mine. I'm not a big buyer. I'm not a big fan of buying. I, I like having hardware. I like proof of work, supporting networks. Um, I believe in that decentralization of things um, aspect. So not a big fan of buying. But to each his own. I'm not knocking people that buy just another way to make money and to be honest most of the time at least over 50 percent of the time it's probably an easier way to make money than mining anyway so let's get some information here from our daily rxd so we're going to head over to my pool page so i am mining on viper we'll do a quick refresh quick refresh for you guys so it's been really kind of weird so my 24 hours is 1.58, which is right about where it should be for six units. You can see they're all hovering right around 260 giga hash like they should. And well, um, it, what I mean by it's been weird is the last couple days, the Radiant Network has been woof, like seesawing all over the place. Um, hash rate wise, huge spikes, huge drops, huge spike, huge drops. I don't know if that's uh, maybe... Um, you know, what's it? not nice hash, RxD is not nice hash, but like rentals, uh, up and down, up and down. Um, it, maybe it's ASIC batches coming 
off online offline for like testing i i don't really know it's kind of been stagnant though overall it's not like usually when you add asics there's a longer period but it's like a brief spike brief down brief spike brief down so it's been kind of weird and inconsistent earnings the last couple of days um but we'll use what's here anyway it is a little lower than i had been seeing recently um and again that's Again, it's just hard to say what's going to happen with the network right now. But for right now, we'll just go with this number. So 4416. So 4416 is my daily RxD at the moment. So that will fill out a bunch of information. So at the current value of RxD, that puts me at essentially daily USD earnings of about $4 and days to ROI in US dollar anyway. Of 577.9 days so that's pretty bad um again that this and this number should be yes this number is just um the net is just my total investment minus how much i've mined so at earning only four dollars a day it will take me an eternity to pay this off um and yeah a lot of that is because this price has really come down a lot it, again if we put this back to what it was one six two eight ROI is now, you know, 318. Anyway, but for today, it's worth very little. Now, I, interestingly though, because it's worth very little, but was worth a lot when I had ex executed the trades, or you would have executed the trades to buy on the 7th of September, I'm actually a lot closer to ROI on the actual yield side of things. So, a little different than um between the two you know like a major difference again apples and oranges these two things are gonna seesaw all over the place especially because the usd value is gonna seesaw all over the place throughout any cycle uh in any market um so it again apples and oranges that's why i'm not a big fan of like people that are like oh you should just bought it's like no as long as you end up ahead in the end like you do you um there's different ways to make money it, that argument's almost like yeah y you can make money buying real estate or you can just invest in the stock market like one you actually like have to do work and upkeep a property but you can still make money doing it or the other is you essentially do nothing and sit on your couch and your investment in the stock market makes you money again you could argue that's smarter because you're not doing less work but if it's if you like doing the work and you it's something you believe in like again it, 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 apples and oranges anyway you guys can put down in the comments below what your thoughts on that but uh to me apples and oranges between these two so but it's good to track both you know that way depending on what type of viewer you are you know where where you're headed and what was a bad decision um uh, but yeah so right now at the current value of rxd looking like you know <laughs> roi in almost 600 days um and looking at uh the yield right now it's about a roi of like 318 days um till i would have mined as much as if i had um just bought so yeah i mean that's just what it is what it is um and kind of to show you an example so let's say some people say rxd might hit 10 cents during the bull let's say it hits 10 cents if it hits 10 cents i already roi'd on you know th this is going positive uh it's not calculating properly probably because i didn't do the right equation but um since now it's Essentially, my net is already pro like above. I, if RxD hits ten cents, I already netted four thousand dollars. Is what I'm trying to say. So, again, that's why mining can still be profitable, especially if you use the HODL method. Again, is that going to be as good as if you had just bought that amount? No, because again, apples and oranges. Anyway, in the meantime, though. The other reason you guys are here is for FOMO Calc. So you can't actually buy one right now, at least direct from Ice River. So the price is actually most likely going to be more than $399 based on what I've seen on the resale market. 
Well, let's say you somehow got one for three ninety nine, dollars and the current price of RXD today, um, that would mean you would actually have a approximately, you would have been able to buy about 436256 RXD. So if I put in how much a single one of these units makes a day, so if we just, we'll just do equals this divided by six, and that means a single RX zero would be making about $736, or er, I wish, 736 RXD a day, um, which is a daily US dollar value of 67 cents and puts you at a days to ROI of 592. Now on the yield front, it would actually be the exact same because we're assuming you would buy the coins on the same day. So again, uh, on the same day that you're, you know, starting to mine. So again, 592, these numbers will always be the same on this calculator, the days to ROI, because they are based on the exact date of today and the price today. Whereas my calculator shows you the price today versus the price essentially when I would have bought the units so very different but we're assuming you're buying today and somehow get it today in my FOMO calcs which is obviously not possible but again that's kind of the best way to go about these at the moment um so right now you'd be looking at a pretty rough ROI on either front I mean that's almost double my ROI on a yield front again that's because if you had invested in RxD the day that I bought Rx zeros, it was also considerably more expensive to buy Rxd, and it's kind of come down considerably since then. Um, and on the days to ROI front for US dollar, it's pretty similar, and that also makes sense because again, my number is set for that is based on the HODL method, which means my value of Rxd is the same to the FOMO calcs. The only difference here is that I have already earned about $60 at the current value of hodling. So I should have essentially 60 divided by four days less than this. So that's why it's 577 versus 592. So that's kind of all I got for today on my RX zero calculator. Again, I am looking at these numbers. Yes, it looks like I'm more likely to ROI on the yield front. But I, being at almost a year already on that number um, and knowing more hash rates coming, you know, this number is going to keep climbing up. So in the long run, I do expect, as I mentioned, if this does go up to even five cents, um, that essentially makes my ROI happen. So I do expect that in the long run, my US dollar value will probably be the first to ROI even though right now the calculator is saying the complete opposite. Um, but that's because I expect my yield to keep dropping while also expecting the RxD value to hopefully increase. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. Curious your thoughts. Don't know if you got an RxD or curious if you did. Um, again, I just have been mining Radiant since its inception pretty much. I have a giant bag on GPUs and from FPGAs already. So just wanted to continue continue contributing to the network, help decentralize it. It's also why I got so many units. You know, I do have at least some hash rate, you know, we're talking about 1.6 tera hash at the moment, which on the network is a decent amount where it currently is. Uh, we're only at two peta hash. Again, that probably in the grand scheme of things long-term won't be much, but for now, helping decentralize. Uh, curious if you bought an RX0, here's what you guys are all doing. Uh, that's all I got for today on my RX zeros, and we'll probably have a update, you know, maybe a few months from now when I got more yield and maybe the, uh, you know, new ASICs have come out or the hash rate's gone berserk or whatever. Um, but until then, that's all I got on my RX zeros. Until next time.